The prophet makes plea to nation. Our divine and national movement stands for the specific grand principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And other prophets are applying to a loyal, faithful Moors, members, and American citizens to help me and my great uplifting acts for uplifting foreign humanity among the Asiatic race and nation. For I have suffered much and severely in the past through misunderstanding what the movement was dedicated to. <laughs> it is the great God Allah alone that guides the destiny of the modern national movement. I know all true American citizens are identified by national descent names to answer and apply to the free national constitution of this free national republic of the United States of America. That's why I'm calling on all true national citizens to help me morally and financially in my great work I am doing to help this national government. For without a free national name, with a descent flag of your forefathers, there is not a national divine title of the government in which we live. This is from your true and divine prophet to all and far, all American and foreign sympathizers. <laughs> Islam? Islam. Islam, I would like to call to the altar our first demonstrator, Assistant Grand Sheik. Islam? Islam. 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 Islam, 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 Islam. 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 Rise, we pray to the great Father God Allah, orchestrator of all the seven planes of existence. If you're now to the Prophet of Jali, founder of the more Scientific of America, aligned with the Moorish divine and natural principles. We command to my grand sheik of nature, El Bay. We command to chairwoman sheik of nature, Atum El Bay. We command to muftis on staff. I give honor to all the brothers and sisters who are here. Trying to get understanding of what it is we are called to do. Islam, 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 Moors, Islam. Are y'all feel it's divine even? Beautiful, yeah. great brother. That's good, Moors. That's very good. I'm glad we're here to make it on this holy night. You know, we're coming into the uh, we be doing another physical year, and um, you know that they have a twofold meaning to the word New Year's. Is it last? New Year's to find. Yes. And more scientific America represents, yes. you know, the return of a new cycle of the sun making its resolutionary return back to its original state where it originated from. We know that a year is considered 365 days, as well as a leap year 366 days. Now, we know that our years are defined by calendars. These calendars serve a particular purpose. Why? To try the existence of, to try the existence of the people of that particular area, a geographical location. So now we know that all the different nations have different calendars. We know that the Muslims have their calendar. We know that the Jews have their calendar. We also know that the Gregorian have their calendar as well, which we use today. Even going back into the ancient times, we had the Egyptians have their calendar, which is called the Indira calendar. And even before that, we had the Sumerian calendar. So now, what was the significance of all that? Because I'm going to go into the Holy Quran, chapter 7, and read something. In the face of the fallen man, chapter 1. It says, Time never was, but man was not. If the life of man at any time again, a time will come, will, will, will end. The thoughts of Allah cannot be circumscribed. No fitted mind can comprehend things infinite. All finite things are subject unto change. All finite things will cease to be because there were a time when they were not. The bodies and souls of men are finite. Pause up. The bodies and souls of men are finite things and they will change. Yea, from the finite point of view that the time will come when there will be no more. For man himself, not the body, nor the soul, he is spirit and a part of a lot. Islam? Islam. Now I'm going to go to chapter 2 because now you see a creation of fallen men. It says time but was when man was not. That means that man count time. Man decided to chart the time and on according to his existence on this planet Earth. It says time but was when man was not. So now we want to get a, a reference on why time was so important. 
And the way we're gonna find out that time was important, we need to go to chapter two. Okay. Education of Mary Elizabeth and Zoe in Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're gonna go down to the chapter. We're gonna go down to the seventh verse. And if you know this talking to Mary and Elizabeth, and it's and she's speaking to them and telling them that it is not strange. That don't happen. Law governs all events. From all the time it was ordained that you should be with us and in the sacred school to be taught. And the Negroes alone took Mary and Elizabeth out of the sacred grove nearby where they were where, where they were wont to teach. The Negroes said to Mary and Elizabeth, You may esteem yourself Christ blessed, for you are chosen mothers as own promised sons, who are ordained who are ordained to lay the solid rock and the sure foundation stone on which the temple of the first man is rest. A temple that should not be destroyed. Twelve. It said, we measure the time by a cycle of ages. And the gate of every age will deem a milestone in a journey of a race. An age has passed. The gate unto another age has wide open the age to touch up time. This is the preparation age of the soul, the kingdom of Emmanuel, a lion man. And these, your sons, will be the first to tell the news and to teach the gospel of good will to men and peace on earth. Islam? Islam. So there's a beautiful understanding in these lessons right here. Because we can see that the prophet said, the, the prophet said time number one of a man was not. It's the life of time of a man beginning in the time when he seeks to exist. Then it tells you about Jesus represents the perfect man. We understand that Jesus was conceived in his mother's womb, who was married. And Mary educated Jesus on the things that he were, she was instructed to by Elihu, who was directed by the great creator of God Allah. And it was telling Elizabeth in, in uh Mary that in your womb is two long promised son. A closer issue in the age of Emmanuel. Now, now we see we understand that the day that Jesus was taught represent life. So he was taught, he was taught to how he knew his life. So now we see that in terms of New Year's have two a uh, two four meaning. One represents the physical activity that goes on within the year. And the other one represents the complete cycle of the 365 days in which the sun makes his resolutionary cycle. We also represent the time between life and death, because we know that on the spring equinox all life begins. We know that in the winter solstice all life dies. So we understand that these are the preparation for the soul. What is the soul? The soul is the spirit plane vibrating vibrate not so fast. So we understand that the soul is consciousness. So we give we give honor to the great father, we give praise to the great father God Allah, and we give honor to all those individuals who explained to us how important time was. Because we understand that when we go through the time cycle, it's important for change. We know that in, in the time of, of winter, all things die. In the time of summer, all things grow. So we're constantly planting and sowing seeds. See, but we, want, we, want, we should just look at this, this thing as, as planting or doing agricultural work. This comes with the knowledge of oneself. We should be planting seeds. We should be, we should be, we should be planting our seeds, getting the soil right. That's still a lot of information. See, our job as most Americans is go out and plant these seeds in, these, in, in our brothers and sisters. Because the prophet said we are perfect from the seed in which we came. But we, we are growing unto death. We are, we, we're, actually grow, we're actually sowing our seeds in, in the soil that won't be able to, to let us grow. Why? Because the soil is not being maintained. What is the soil? It's, this, it's, 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 the, it's the earthly realm we live on. It's the, it's the domestic society that we live in. See, they're not dealing with the principles that are needed to flourish. See, we 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 are considered the dead people in the dead land, but we need to wake up because the prophet was trying to bring back that piece of society. So he brought back all the information dealing with our ancestors on how they counted time. It was chart in their race. The prophet said we give a mouth on the journey of a race because that one door closed and another one fired open. That meant that through all these ages, our forefathers explaining who we were. Once that age ended, what is the age? Two thousand one hundred sixty years. Once that age ended, another one flew open explaining the past. Past event that, that happened in that time, so we can see it in this new era of time now. See, but somewhere in that uh, understanding, we got confused. Why? Because the story that was being told to us wasn't, wasn't being told right. So we gave honor to the Great Father God Allah for ordaining the prophet to come teach our history to ourselves. Come show us the time frame where we come from, because the prophet said this flag, the most flag, can govern over 50 years, over 50,000 years. So when you think about 50,000 years, you want to go see who your people who existed back in those 50,000 years. 
Well, 50,000 years, if, and it take you all the way back to the ancient Sumerians. The ancient Sumerians were the first originators of time. They were the first originators of the calendar. See, when we see more history, we see more science, we, we stop. We want to just associate with the, when the prophet came upon the scene. But prophet brought us our old time religion, Islamism, which means he brought us all the history, all the lesson history of ourselves, going all the way back to Sumerian times, on up to the day. So now it's important to understand it because this is who we are. This is how we belong ourselves. By going according to the traditions and custom of our forefathers. We see the Muslims do it. They became their, their way of life. The Jews do it. And everybody else for that matter, according to their traditions and custom. We're the only people under the Muslims as Negro, Black, and Cousin of the Ethiopian don't have any illustrious history to tap back into. So we give honor to the lessons that the Prophet Noah Jali explained to us dealing with Jesus and, and Jesus and Mary. Elizabeth and John. As well as in the other stories dealing with Egypt with the with the same parables dealing with the Egyptian time, with the same people. Because the spirit always incarnates. But we have to be open, our eyes have to be open to see these things. See, we understand when, when New Year's came about, it represents the, the uh the closing of their of their uh the Europeans doing transacting business in their corporate capacity. Meaning that every new year they reset their books. But see, this is according to their agenda. We ourselves have our own agenda. Our new year is March 22nd. Right with the spring equinox. When all life starts to manifest again. Now I'm going to read a different a definition from the dictionary. We're going to open up in the dictionary and look up the word year because it's important. It says the word year. One, the period of time during which the Earth makes its complete revolution in its orbit. The space or period of time when it lasts between the sun, leaving either equinoctial points or either tropic. It returns to the same. This is the astronomical tropical or solar year. And the year in the strict and proper sense of the word. This period comprehends what are called the 12 calendar months. And it's usually calculated to commence on the first day of January and to end on the third day, on the first day of December. It is not quite uniform, but it means Lent is about 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. In popular usage, however, the year consists of 365 days and every fourth or leap year of 366 days. Two, the time in which, which any planet complete a revolution as the year of Jupiter or Saturn. Three, age or old age, as a man in years. A year of mind, a commemoration of a person's memory one year after death. Bisectile year, a leap year. Cancellor year, see under the cancellor. Christian year, the cycle of religious ceremonies commemorated, commemorating events in the life of Christ. It begins with the season of Advent. Church year, the same as the Christian year. Civil year, see under civil. Common lunar year, a period which consists of 12 lunar months or 354 days, which is the Muslim calendar. Common year, any year of, of 365 days or opposed to the bisectile or leap year. Ecclesiastical year, same as the Christian year. Embolistic or intercalary lunar year, the period which consists of 13 lunar months or 384 days. A physical year, the period of time elapsed between one annual balancing of accounts and another. I just explained that to you. Great year, see Platonic year and under Platonic. Gregorian year, see under Gregorian. Hebrew year, an ordinary or embolomistic year of 12 or 13 lunar months, respectively. So, as we see, we got all these interpretations of the word year. But see, when they teach us the definition of years, they take it from the true meaning in which it was supposed to be represented, represents the new year of a revolutionary cycle of our sun, the earth going around the sun. But see, we have to get back to these old lessons, these old teachings. Why? Because we really sound foolish when we go up into these uh, these demonstrations with our brothers and sisters trying to explain time. We have no true identity of what time means. Time never was a man was not. Prophet said, Master Mind chased himself back. So we chasing ourselves back, back to the ages of time and seeing our forefathers and how they represented. 
what time meant to him. It was a time for preparation. See, we 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 are running around and, and just in a lost state. It's sad. It's truly sad. You know, trying to explain that there's we, we say that three hundred sixty five in in, in days in a year. There's only seven. See, this is what we thought for was, and it's confusion. The process is only seven days in a year. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's long, is it? Seven days. If they're doing the 65 days, what are the names of the rest of the days? See, this is what's confusing us, Mark. It's time to wake up. It's time to think for yourself. It's time to put what the Papa told you to work. Understand that. Then we got to use the age of Emmanuel, which is Ryan Magic. Show that, that we, 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 we honor all these interpretations of year, but don't get away from the true year. The true meaning of what the year is supposed to be representing. All right, new birth. We only come around with the spring equinox. So the quicker we can renew, we, we remove the now, the quicker we can get back on track to where the prophet designed us to be. And with that, I believe my exercise of my five senses, and I'm going to use the next Sunday school, uh, part of Sunday, uh, Friday night class teacher, which will be uh, that of my grand sheep, the next L. Bay, and you come to exercise his five senses, support the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Islam, more. Uh, Islam. Yeah. 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 Allah, in the name of the great architect of the universe, Allah, give honors to the holy and divine prophet, Noble Dr. Ali, give honors to all active Moorish Americans, give honors to the Moabites, the children, and all the American citizens. Islam? Islam. Islam, you may be seated. Give honors to you. <clears throat> Keeping up with tonight's lesson, dealing with the new year, I just want to shed some light on actually, actually what the new year is all about. This is referred to as what they call a fiscal new year. Fiscal new year is the time when the corporate books for any major corporation within this particular United States territory, the day that they agree on to close the books for the year ending and start a new calendar year for corporate activity. Like the Sheik was speaking about earlier, you need a reference point to calculate Anything that has a beginning has an end. So January 1st is the beginning of a fiscal new year that was created by man here in the United States of America for corporate reconstruction of a calendar year and to start new business for a new calendar year. So it's a time where all businesses shut down, they do inventory, they clean up their books, whatever balances is old or outstanding to the company, it's a time where they close everything, shut all profits, whatever loss was made, they shut that down and start again for a new corporate activity. So what does that have to do with us? <clears throat> well, the United States is a major corporation referred to as the U.S., the U.S. corporation. So the U.S. corporation is a corporation that's functioning on behalf of the United States Republic. So the United States Republic is doing business as the U.S. Corporation. The U.S. Corporation is the name that people are only familiar with 
for their government structure, but the U.S. is not the government structure. The U.S. is the corporation. So it's used for corporate activity. Like I said, it's used for doing business purposes, for commercial purposes, for commerce. It's not a negative thing. We just need to understand what the U.S. is and what the United States of America is. We need to understand and identify the parties involved and what powers and what laws pertain to both. The U.S. is a corporate construct, so the only thing that governs the U.S. is corporate laws, which are commercial codes. It's a commercial entity created on paper. Most of the people are only familiar with the U.S. from their government construction, but the U.S. is not the government. So the citizens of the U.S. corporation, U.S., the citizens were made citizens or members via the 14th Amendment of the unvalidated portion of the Constitution that was never ratified. They were made members of the U.S. corporation under that and not under the United States Republic. So there's a difference when you're dealing with citizenship. You could be a citizen of anything. You could be a citizen of AT&T. You could be a citizen of McDonald's because they're just corporations. And citizen just means member. So that's why it's important that we understand what citizenship actually is and what are we citizens of. So if we say we're citizens of the U.S., then we're just saying that we're members of the U.S. corporation. But that's an artificial entity. That's not the sovereign citizenship of the we the people or the free national republic of the United States. That's not the free national government that was established by all free national beings. That we need to be clear of. So we adopt this January 1st New Year's thing as a holiday for the American people, but it's not necessarily the holiday for the American people. It's a holiday for the people who refer to themselves as artificial citizens. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it doesn't have good in it. I'm just saying we need to know the truth about whatever it is that we're calling on. Because everything is symbolic and, and everything has a spiritual application to it. So remember, whatever we do, we affect the universe at the same time. Whatever we do down here on earth affects the universal forces. So just by calling certain names out, calling some vibrations out, or vibrating on a certain number or frequency, we affect the universal's vibration. So we need to be in harmony and we need to be in concert with what the universe wants to vibrate and freak and you know and have a frequency on. Mm -hmm. Not what we want to. So so when the prophet says that we serve merely ideas of man that never done us any good but always harm, then we need to understand what you know, why is he saying that? Because if we are serving ideas of man the physical construction of man, not spirit man, but the law of laboratory rate, which is known as man, the, the physical, the flesh man. If we only serve in the ideas of flesh, then the universe is going to be upset with that because it's not in harmony with the flesh of man. So therefore, if we're just calling on that, then we'll be calling on a lower vibration. So a holiday can turn out to be a negative and a sinful day if we're vibrating or celebrating that holiday from a lower aspect of nature. Mm -hmm. It's like celebrating Satan. Say, say for example, you celebrating Satan's birthday and you sit there and do rituals and have a big feast and everybody comes together in the name of celebrating Satan. 
Well, the vibratory rate of that will be very low because of the force that you're calling on. The prophet says in a proclamation, every evil spirit is moving now. They're trying every weak mind to tear down and drag out the true foundation which has been laid by me. So he said every evil spirit is moving now. So you got different types of spirits. You have different types of spirits. And each spirit has its own vibratory weight. Spirit is nothing but a force. So like the prophet says, I can I can throw a spirit at you to make you do this, or I can make throw a spirit to make you also do that. Hmm. You know, so the thing is, what spirit are you subject to? There's different spirits for different purposes. Different vibrations, different frequencies. So different things manifest according to the vibratory rate that produced it. This is what produced man in the first place. Because the Quran says the eaters became distorted. The murky eaters of the flesh. The eaters became murky, which means dense. It became so dense to a solid or the physical appear, which only represents a lower vibration. So I'm just showing you how spirits and forces work. But is the now what does that have to do with the universe? The prophet says. I took you above the sun, moon, and stars. He said he took us above that. How? In thoughts. Because he spoke about the different planes in your Quran. But he said what? The ethers caused these to be. So even the sun, moon, and stars are manifest of a force. And we're higher than that in thought because once you go back to your native plane, then you go back into the formless substance in the molds of time, which has a high vibratory rate. So the universe actually has its own vibratory rate. Each planet, each planet has its own vibratory rate. And only Things that's made up from that ether plane can comprehend things on that ether plane. So you have to be of a certain vibration to comprehend and to relate to other forms of life that's also on that vibratory rate. If something is vib vibrating on a lower frequency, then you wouldn't be able to comprehend things on that higher frequency. And that has everything to do with what, we, what we're subject to as man and woman in the flesh. We still disagree with a lot of things and we agree with a lot of things. What you agree with is what's on your vibratory rate. What you disagree with is things that's not on your vibratory rate. You, you have the a will and the power to choose. So when we're dealing with the forces of nature, then we have to understand that, okay, well, look, whatever force that you're calling on, where does that force derive from? Where is the vibratory rate of that force? Same thing like I told you before with food. All foods have a vibratory rate. They also refer to it as a, a, a pH balance. Water has the same thing. The elements have it. Fire has it. Is in the wind. So when something becomes murky or dips, when it, it loses its, 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 its vibration, then it becomes that of a lesser force. So therefore, if something is too dense, then it has no um, nutritional value to it, food-wise or mentally. So if I just spark a conversation with you and I just start talking about you know, something that, that has no value. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, you, did you see the Army and Navy game the other night? Oh, man, the Army beat them by 30 points, and they were doing this and doing that. And then, you know, if I just start kicking that to you, what I'm telling you is 
it has no nutritional value to your mental state at that point. Because it's only entertainment that distracts you from the necessities of you understanding self. Now, if you're already above that and, and you already have a perception of thyself and who created you, then that's another thing. Then it doesn't distract you at that point. But if, if you're still in the process of trying to establish who you are and find out how self operates, then things that have no value will just become a distraction to you. And entertainment and things is put there to distract you from the forces of nature. Hold on for one second. I'll get you. So all this is still based around the new year and I'm going to tie this in. Being that the calendars have been tampered with over time, we don't function on our own clock anymore. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by our own clock, meaning the clock of destiny. When you hear that term, clock of destiny, that's not just an organization or affiliation or group. That's dealing with the rotation of the universe known as the clock of destiny. Everyone has a destiny. But once I said the universe has its own clock of destiny. It has its own cycle. Meaning that it has its own circle of events that's going to occur regardless of its own will. Because it doesn't function off of its own will. That's its own clock of destiny. Man has another clock of destiny. So, our native plane is not the clock of destiny of man, and it's not the clock of destiny of the actual celestial system, or what some would call the zodiac. We're not subject to the zodiac. See, we created the zodiac, just like we created man. But if we're not vib vibrating on that frequency that created the zodiac or created man, then we do become subject to it. Just like we become subject to some of these inorganic laws that were created. And the so-called religions that were created. And the merely ideas of man. They wasn't created by us, but we became subject to it. Just because we start vibrating on a lower frequency of that which created it. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Another way to look at this is you become subject to whatever it is that you don't understand. Whatever you don't understand, you become subject to it. So, if someone else has more knowledge than you, and they're governing you, and you don't understand how, then you do become subject to them. And this is what happened to us dealing with citizenship, being branded Negro, Black, and Color, and the other brand names that was put out there. We become subject to it because we don't understand it. Therefore, we can't counter it because we don't know, we don't have enough background or information to counter that. So we are forced to, to function off of a calendar that's not in harmony with the universe itself or the forces of science. This is why the prophet says there's seven days in a circle. There's seven days in a year. But we're not functioning off of that seven, which is the same seven that you see right here. This is the circle of life. This is also the clock of destiny. But we're not functioning off of that. Because we're functioning off of another clock that was created by man. And we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody. Just like we don't understand huh? self. We don't understand a clock that created us on a physical. So we can't really deal with the higher forces of nature until we understand how man was created. You know, going back to the prophet's literature once again, he said there's few people who knows the truth about man. I'm going to repeat. There's only a few people who knows the truth about man. And, and and that's serious. And he said, those who know, know that it is foolish to try to impart that on the ignorant. Also going back to the lessons, it says, per perception of thyself and he who created thee. What else is it that man needed to know? The reason why is because once you have a perception, a perception of self, then the game is over. So really, we, 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 we talk about a lot of issues, and the real major issue is we don't understand self. And that's really the, the, the bulk of our problems. We're subject to man because we don't understand man. So this is why we serve in merely ideas of man because we don't understand man. So we can't counter man. So we subject to man. Man governs us. Man governs us. Which means the flesh governs us. And I'm not just talking about gender. But the flesh itself governs us. That's why the lessons also said, let the spirit direct thy flesh. Let the spirit, don't let man direct the flesh. Man is the flesh. Let the spirit direct the flesh. But we got to identify spirit. What spirit? Because you can have any old spirit direct the flesh. We don't want any old spirit to direct us. Because, like I said, you know, you got evil spirits out there. So you don't want an evil spirit to direct you. And that's what's been happening. So once again, the holidays, you know, the, holly, the holiday is really supposed to be a holy day. A holy day is a day that's harmonious to God. That's what a holiday, a holy day is supposed to be. So anytime we utter and bring attention to a holiday, that day is supposed to be in harmony with the universal's force mm -hmm. and the higher forces of nature. So if what we're doing and what we're calling on is that of a lower vibration, then it's not a holiday. Slow, she. Slow. Um, you, I remember you always say that you who write to the folks at your timeline mm -hmm. and dealing with the topic New Year and understand that New Year is considered to be the revolutionary time when the earth repeats the cycle and as well it, it represents corporate activity or annual activity. Mm -hmm. Now when you say you who write to the folks at your timeline shows us that the New Year physical year for the corporations represents activity that they do. Mm -hmm. Now is there a difference between that corporate activity and, and, and because According to our tradition, in the spring we out, we plant and do things of that nature, which is considered doing business, but mm -hmm. according to, from a divine aspect. Mm -hmm. So, is there a difference between the two, between the corporate activity that goes on within the physical year and the and the and the, and the spiritual uh, application, what goes on to the spring equinox to the, the, those who come up in that tradition, as planting, you know. Uh, you yeah, know what I'm saying? well, it will be a different dial for different purposes, like I said. As far as Earth itself, Earth, Earth's New Year, listen to what I'm saying, Earth, Earth, planet Earth, New Year is March 21st, True. So. which is the beginning of the spring equinox. 
So that's when the resurrection of earth takes place. So anything that's part and parcel to earth is affected by the spring's equinox in March 21st. It's the beginning of the new year for the universe itself. So it goes through its own cycle of events during that day, regardless if we like it or not, regardless if we observe it or not. So, once again, we're in the winter solstice right now. So this is the lowest point. This is the dead season. True. So, there's no springing forth of any new life right now. So this is not the beginning of life. Because life doesn't spring forth, forth in the beginning of the winter. True. So what happens is just by us being out of sync with what the holidays really mean, we're not taking advantage of what the universe has to bring forth. So just like, like you said, if you're a farmer, if you're a farmer, you can't just plant seeds when you want to. Or if I tell you, well, you know what, we're going to make, um, you know, July 22nd, you know, a, a holiday and a new year, and this is what we're going to do. Just because I said it don't mean that you plan your harvesting around the holiday that I just put forth. Sure. And that's what we have done. Mm -hmm. That we take for granted what these holidays and these solstices really represent. And they're gonna plant, they're gonna throw a force out there that can either create, regenerate, or bring something to a, a, a decay state. And if we don't understand what's going on, then we can't put things in this proper perspective. So you're not gonna plant seeds in a right season if you don't understand why or when to do so. That's mm -hmm. why I'm glad you said that because, like you just said, he was about to book such a timeline. Isn't that the same key? Because certain certain fruits or plants don't go in the summertime and certain, certain times don't go in the winter. That's but correct. when you go to the European store, they got fruit all year round. That's because it's important. It's important. That's right. Yeah. But, but it shows the difference those who are conscious of the, 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 uh, the, 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 um, the new year according to you know, the, the, the way it's supposed to be interpreted, mm -hmm. you understand that those fruits or the things that they sell at that particular time in the winter are not really natural food. It might be a hybrid or artificial food because, like you said, in that year, that type of food don't grow. It's, it's out of season. You know, and, and nothing wrong with that. I mean, of course, we import a lot of things, not just fruit and vegetables, but a lot of things. A lot, most goods here in the United States is all imported. Mm -hmm. You know, there's only a few things that's actually, you know, you know, manufactured here. You know, and some things might grow in America just on a different coast where the, the, the climate is different. I mean, so that's all it's still dealing with, with, with the universe. So they still work off that, the, 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 the uh, spiritual clock instead of, and, but they use it, they, they influence, they use it in their time, their calendar, but they actually come from, they are, they're using the, the spiritual the spirit, let me, let me get off right. According to spring equinox, that's where they capitalize off and they use it through their corporate activity through their physical year. Yes, of course. They're in harmony with that. Mm -hmm. And and what's happening is in the winter time, winter solstice, like I said, it's a this is the end of the year mm -hmm. where they close their fiscal books, the corporate books, they close that is at a dead point. Everything comes to a standstill. Most people go on vacation. And like I said before, if they on December 25th to like the second week in January, most big corporations, businesses are closed. So maybe the personnel might be working, but like the higher ups, they're the owners and CEOs and the shared stockholders, they're on, they're on vacation somewhere. And if you even look at right now, New Jersey has a state of emergency because of the, the uh, blizzard that occurred last week. There's a big issue going on right now because the governor actually went on vacation during the blizzard. So what happened was 
the streets wasn't being plowed. The state, the state is saying that they didn't have enough money. They couldn't hire the subcontractors because it wasn't authorized by the governor. So now the backup governor, he wasn't there. What they, they call a lieutenant governor, which is a fairly new position. That they tried to justify his position, saying that in any, any case the governor is not active, then we need a lieutenant governor to sit in his seat. What well, a lieutenant governor wasn't there. So now they got this big uproar because they're saying, oh, look, this, this blizzard, the governor couldn't prevent the blizzard. And that's not what they, they, they're faulting him for. They're saying that, being that this has been labeled a state of emergency, then we need the office of a governor right now to make decisions to actually come to the aid of people. You know how many people died mm -hmm. during this week yeah. from the winter, from, from the blizzard, mm -hmm. from, from ambulances can't even go down the street? Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. There's been a lot of tragedies because of this blizzard. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that the governor could have prevented some of these things just by mm -hmm. being on his post to put certain things in, for, in motion to try to deal with some of these issues. You know, so the citizens at large is like, you know, they were saying, hey, look, we pay taxes, you know, our money is going towards some of these things, and, and when we need it the most, it's, it's right. not there. It's wrong. And it's not like saying, anybody, you, you can go on vacation, everybody deserves to go on vacation, but during a state of emergency, just right now is not the time. True. Especially when you don't have nobody to back your position up. That's what you most need. Exactly. So, even, so my point is, even the governor of the state went on vacation mm -hmm. in this time period we, that, that we're talking about right now. Sure. You know, so we got to understand, you know, some people take advantage of the days off because it's a national holiday. So they figure they get, you know, like the children out of school for a week or two and then, you know, they take advantage and a lot of people planning vacations around this time so they get double the amount of time off. Mm -hmm. So people take advantage of it and things like that. And that's cool, but what we're saying is we need to be in harmony with why the seasons are going through a transformation period. And we need to get in harmony with the changes. That's the only thing we're saying. We're not talking negative or bad not for any of the holidays. All of the holidays have a, 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 a symbolic purpose of it on the divine. But being that we've been dumbed down, we're not conscious of the divine aspect of what that holiday represents. represents. So what we're doing is we're only celebrating the lower aspect of what it represents. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying tonight. Is pay attention to why we're celebrating a certain date. As soon as somebody put a certain day out, you need to scientifically know why that date is the best best day to do that on. If you don't, you just subject to a, another merely idea of man. Awesome. And that's our problem. They throw a date out here, we get all happy and start jumping around. <laughs> and, and that's where the sin comes in at. Because we don't know what we're celebrating or what, what rituals are. For example, Hitler's birthday is May 20th. Now that's a holiday too. Now you start sitting there celebrating and jumping around and want to go to the liquor store and do all of this stuff on May 20th. You don't even understand what you're celebrating. So what you're doing is revoking a certain spirit on that day to get everybody vibrating on a certain frequency on a certain day. You don't know what you're doing. You don't want to put too much energy where it's not needed. Because you could take away from the, the divine aspect or whatever good it has, a, has to offer. So, only thing I'm saying is study. And this was, was the instructions that was given to us through the Prophet Noble Jewel Ali to study ourselves. Study what, what is the celestial system. What is the zodiac? What is the clock of destiny? It's, you know, know what it is and know how it functions. It has its own constitution. Mm -hmm. The only thing we're saying is knowledge it. Knowledge it. Know what it's about. Know why it functions. Know how it functions. Mm -hmm.
we have the winter solstice, back to the winter solstice. One in the house of Capricorn. We refer to this month as December. If you break down the etymology and the root word of December, you have DEC, D-E-C. Am I right? No. Yes, so. What does DEC represent? Ten. ten. The number 10. So what month is this that we say December is in? The 10th month. The 10th house. Well, what month is this according to the calendar year? The 12th. The 12th. That's it. So this is the 12th. They call this the 12th month of December, but December means 10th. Yeah. So, so right then that should raise a red flag to you. And, and, and ask yourself why. So obviously, two months has been out added to this particular calendar, which throws it off from 10 to 12. Ten, if you go back some, this is the 12th month, they say. If you subtract two months, you have eight. Well, this is the 12th month. You subtract two months, that's 10, which is your debt. But you take two more months from that, you have eight. <laughs> and eight is what? Uh, according to your calendar year. August. 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 Okay. But what should it be? So it, it's... A cycle of events that you see. Now different calendars reflect different months. Some calendars according to other nations have 10 months in it and not 12. The sheep spoke about this earlier. So it's not like they're deprived or they have a, a less of a universal's energy they just function off of a different dial. Uh -huh. They just function off of a different dial. Now our minds are programmed to function off of this dial. So all of our activities is based and is used to, we're programmed are functioning off of this calendar system. The prophet introduced this to us in the Quran and told us it's really only seven days in a year. But we're not programmed under our conscious state to function off of that dial. It's, yeah, according to science, yes. But we're not programmed to function off of that. That's a higher state of existence and understanding the rotation, um, the rotation of the several created spirits or the ether planes. It's a high vibration that we're not functioning off of. So he's giving us a reference going back to a native plane, but we're not programmed and we're not uh, present day functioning off of that particular rotational point right now. So yes, we have to deal with what we, what, you know, what we have in front of us. We're living in the United States of America. We know that we've been branded. We know the name has been changed. We know that there's a lot of things wrong with it, but we still are programmed to function off the system, just like the money. We, I mean, we, we, we agree that the money is, is, is fiat, but we still have to program according to it. We still are subject to it in this present state. Yes. Um. Islam, and, and let me just clear that up with the money. Even though we have to function with the fiat currency, which we call money, 
It doesn't mean that we do not put it in its proper perspective. It has a benefit in it because some people have a misconception about, well, you're forced to deal with the currency that's in circulation right now. So why do you keep talking about gold or silver is not in circulation? The reason why is, yes, you can use something by being forced to use it without accepting it consciously. And this is how you have to do with everything. You're forced to deal with a system, a Christianized system. But it doesn't mean that you have to accept it consciously. So we can challenge things just by teaching the truth about it. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to use a $1 bill or one note that they refer to. It doesn't mean I'm not going to use it. Yes, I know it's fake. Mm -hmm. But I'm forced to use it. But within my consciousness, I challenge it just by teaching and knowing the truth about it. So that's what, as morals, what we have to do, even though we're subject to, to, uh, to a, a carnal system. Doesn't mean that you accept the carnal system. You only accept it for what it is. But that, don't, your consciousness never stops there. You always gravitate towards the higher aspect of that. That's how you turn it or you polarize it. That's how you neutralize something. So if you got too much on this side, then you have to add some over here to balance your equation. That's how your conscious, your mental state works. So if you have too much negative thoughts going on, you have to think positive. The positive would neutralize the negative. So even though we're subject to the flesh right now, by mentally raising our thoughts to infinite wisdom will neutralize this flesh so it becomes to a point where your flesh is not is secondary is not needed at that point that's how you ascend out of the flesh is by neutralizing it through raising your thoughts to a higher conscious level once your vibratory rate gets to where it needs to be then your consciousness will not be able to dwell in this flesh anymore it wouldn't be the right vehicle for it anymore. Because what your mental state needs to do to gravitate can't be done in a physical uh, flesh body anymore. So it has to go, it has to be housed into another vehicle or body which will best get its job done. So, I got that question. It's long, let Brother Oswald go. It's long. It's long. Challenge back to where you were talking about the calendar. I've always learned that, uh, uh, well, I've always accepted that August was named after Augustus Caesar in July after Ju Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. If you look at the word September, and, and if you if you count from million, you got million, billion, trillion, quatrillion, quintillion, sextillion, septillion mm -hmm. is the seventh one. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you, not to you, this, this is December. December. Mm. And so, uh, and then also, using this 365 day calendar, some of the, some of the um, zodiac signs have more days in it than the other ones. That just that doesn't seem like that would be uh, proper. Mm. Uh, they all yeah. should be equal to be. Islam. And those names that we call upon are named after Roman gods. Yeah. And once again, for communication purposes, we have to say August. We have to keep repeating this. So every August, you always say in August, mm -hmm. because you have to deal with communication. But what that does is it invokes that spirit. Yeah. Of the Roman God. Mm -hmm. That's how they keep the Roman gods alive mm -hmm. by forcing you to keep invoking that spirit. Yeah. So every time you call on that, you call on it, you call on the name because it's a month. Mm -hmm. You can care less about the God. But what happens is just by calling on the name, you invoke in that spirit. And that's why they do that. Names of streets, names of states, names of towns. Names are all kinds of things in 
in this portion of the United States mm -hmm. is mostly mm -hmm. Christianized and named after Roman the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And and once they colonized this territory, they changed the names and named them after their images and their gods. Mm -hmm. So we're forced to live within the society and call on the names of the streets, call on names of presidents. Mm -hmm. You call on names of slave masters. You might say, oh yeah, I'm about to go down Washington Street. Yeah. You know, and, and all these other names. And you, the spirits you're calling on is that of, of, of the ones who defeated you. Mm -hmm. So you const you constantly calling on your opponent. You're con you know, and let, let's just deal with, with reality for a second. Whenever you have a, a so-called enemy, and just relate growing, growing up, it could be a football team, basketball team, it could be a person that you had a fight with going through school or whatever. Anytime you had an opponent or an enemy, mm -hmm. you remember how that feeling, how you despise the name of it? <laughs> you didn't like hearing the name of your opponent, how it just irks your nerves? All right, the problem is now we're calling on these names every day and don't know it's our enemy. Mm -hmm. So it does, we don't catch feelings off it. It doesn't bother us because we don't understand it to, to be the ones that defeated us, especially someone that defeated you. Now, you know, it's one thing if you always beat your opponent, then you laugh at it when you hear the name. But now if it's some, something that you can't beat or something that defeated you or really did something really grimy to you, you don't like hearing that name. So that shows us how consciously we wasn't taught who the enemy was. Because if we did, we would despise some of the things that we're doing now. So once again, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying this as to retaliate with hate towards certain names. The only thing I'm saying is be conscious of it. I can withdraw from something that I know doesn't vib vibrate with my soul. And I don't even have to speak about it. It might be someone, something you call as simple as a holiday, like today, you, yeah. you know, they say it's uh, New Year's Eve, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't have to go force my belief on anyone. I just withdraw from it. And from that, that's my way of counter-reacting what I know it wouldn't really represent. Same thing with anything else. You know, I'm not saying you stand out there with a picket sign, and, and battle whatever they're saying. I'm saying that just teach somebody who don't know exactly I've, I've done my duty. Just by bringing to your attention something that you didn't know. But now, f from a ritual perspective, remember the universe, the natives, people who are in tune with nature, and I'm going to get to you in a minute, Shiva. People who are in tune with nature do rituals in mm -hmm. harmony with the seasons changing, mm -hmm. with the solstices and the equinox. So they do rituals to invoke the universe energy. They pray, they do rituals, and they give honor to the four corners of the universe. Natives do this. A lot of Mexicans do this. So-called American Indians do this. When you hear them pray and do their rituals, you will notice everything down to their steps and what they're saying is in harmony to the four corners. They pray to the four corners. They call them by different names. Mm -hmm. The Zodiac. Mm -hmm. the other nations and other cultures identify the Zodiac by different names. Mm -hmm. We just program to one name or aspect, just like the prophet says, mm -hmm. The, 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 when he referred to the seven creative spirits, he said the Hebrews call these spirits the Elohim. He just said the Hebrews call them that. He didn't say everybody calls them the Elohims. Mm -hmm. So they're only the Elohims to the, to the Hebrews. But there's something else to another culture or somebody who talked a different language. It's the same force, it's the same creative spirits, they're just called differently by different people. So the same thing when he says all people worship Allah, people just call him by different names. But it's the same God. 
everybody's serving the same God, and that's why he says only one religion. We keep arguing with each other about what name you call it. But it's, it's only one God and one religion. What's, what's the big fuss about? Islam, Shiva's. Islam reminds me of praise that Allah answers with the Prophet of 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 the Prophet with that being said, I'm going to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, the prophet states, and science supports the statement mm -hmm. that man is mind, mm -hmm. and mind never does forget. Mm -hmm. you know? And although we're not conscious of it, it's a spell. Mm -hmm. you know? And man, mind never forgets. You know, mm -hmm. Your subconscious never forgets. Sure. And you know, so you know, certain things, you might smell, smell, or hear something, and it makes you feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't understand why, mm -hmm. but it's science, and it's, it's supposed to affect you. Mm -hmm. You know, on a spiritual level, it affects you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just wanted to say that because to support what you're saying about how, you know, even even um, yeah. those names that's being we're calling on for mm -hmm. the for the months mm -hmm. and, and so on, we gotta yeah. understand that they were those names were created and used with an intent, mm -hmm. and that today people will say, well, I don't say it for that reason. And create their own meaning for it, but it doesn't change the spirit or the spell of it. Cause you don't have, I mean, I mean, you can have power over it, but because you don't understand the science, you don't have enough power to overcome that spell. That's true. You know, because that's done in numbers, and it's no different from black being like the open. We may born someone the truth about for black me, they like nah, you know, I got a different meaning for it. Negro, I got a different meaning for it. You know, even your names, when you break it down, the meaning of your names. Mm -hmm. Everyone create their own meaning for something mm -hmm. and don't understand, don't want to understand the true intent behind the word itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when you understand what the meaning is and you change that polarity consciously, then that's power. Mm -hmm. It's not power when you change it with no purpose. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's ignorance yes. at that point. Islam. Islam. And that's what I was going to say as well about. You know, for example, I'm glad I said it first. <laughs> um, um, for as a holiday, a new year, they have they say that uh, everybody has a new year re resolution, right? Right. Now, so everybody always put a goal out there that is positive. Something that they want to start doing right for this new year, mm -hmm. right? So what they're doing is planting a seed. But it's the wrong time. It's the wrong time, and <laughs> most of the time, people don't follow <laughs> what their New Year's resolution is. And that's why, because it's the wrong time to plant the seed. It's not. You don't know what occurs. It's also part of the program. It's a part of the program. True. It's part of the program. Right. Yeah. And Look how they bring in the new year. A person could say, a person could have a drug habit. And say, well, my new year's resolution is to get off the drugs. But the way they bring in the new year is by doing the drugs. <laughs> so they, they psych themselves out and say, well, this is the last night I'm doing this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they're going to indulge more in it. With, and they're consciously trying to tell themselves that this is the last day that they're going to do it. Right. Like, like it's a... Right. It's an oxymoron. Right. Hypocritical. Right. It's not. <laughs> and, and this is how we're programmed to think. Right. We do the opposite of whatever goal it is we put out there. And that's insanity. Exactly. It's, it's inconstancy. Yeah. It's insanity. It's a whole lot of things. It's a whole lot of things. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Um, so is this the purpose of Rome? Because we know that according to the calendar we're talking about, the majority of the world use the Gregorian calendar. You know, it started in the mid 1800, late 1800. So if that's the case, Gregory, which was a pope, because the Gregorian calendar goes back to one of the popes who was named Gregory, which was a ruler in Rome. Mm -hmm. So that shows that Rome, even though it didn't have the name Rome, Rome was still accomplishing his agenda by giving another misnomer to accomplish whatever he wanted to accomplish within that misnomer. Mm -hmm. So that's all. And also, don't get me wrong. Our forefathers are responsible for going by different systems and different kinds of systems. Now, don't give the credit to Gregory or anybody else. 
Because <laughs> they're just functioning off of dollars that they seen that was introduced by our forefathers. Our that. problem is we're, we're mm -hmm. giving it the wrong ownership. Mm -hmm. right. And we're calling it by a different name. Mm -hmm. Just no different from us, right? We're Moors. They renamed us black. And if we keep acknowledging the black, then what we do is we lower the vibration of what a moor really represents. So the moor is not as potent no more because his name and his glory is misplaced. The illustrious acts of him is, is misplaced in history. So now the other people get credit for what the moor has done. You follow what I'm saying? Okay. That was the purpose that I'm doing. That's why they keep thinking that you're thinking the Moors were some people in Spain. They did some good things in Spain and then they left and it was off the scene. That's why chapter 2 is so important. Chapter 2 explains that. You know, that the Redeemer agent is joining the mouth to the great. You got one door closed and the one flies open. Mm -hmm. The prophet said the flag and the government for over 50,000 years. So if he's telling you you've done for over 50,000 years and that takes you back into those histories, not as Moors, but they went under another name, but they are still Moors, yeah. you know, and then when you deal with the calendar, 50,000 years takes you back into Sumerian history, mm -hmm. which is our forefather. So truly it's all Moors science. Yeah. So, and, and it goes back. And the only thing I'm saying is don't throw out the dates or necessarily what they call on something right now. Just know the origin of it and the origin of the, the go back into an ancient terminology of what it was called at that time. True. That's the only thing we're saying. So. Not saying that the calendar system is totally off. It's you know, they didn't create it. They just renamed it. Mm -hmm. so. so most of the things that we're subject to is really has some significance to it. It's just been renamed. And that alone will throw you off vibration and throw you strictly off beat. So. That's, what, that's what we're saying. It will really, they, they didn't have to change too much just by changing the name to the lot. So. The name is probably one of the most powerful things that you can change to change, change the nature of the thing. That's why I said right. your name is your nature. Right. Once you change the name of something, it changes the nature. So if I was born, you know, uh, Tom Johnson, if that's what I was raised as, that my mental state is based on whatever whatever that represents. That's the nature. It has no foundation. It's but it's but so much I can ascend or unfold to as long as I'm I'm conscious on that level. But if I change my name to the Lord Noble Nature of Bay, what I'm doing is invoking and calling on a higher force. I automatically force my consciousness to gravitate to a higher state of existence. It's not the same. It's not the same mental state. The whole, the, the form is the same. But man is not the body nor the soul, so it doesn't even matter. The form is not what you're looking at. It's the mental state is not the same individual. It's not the same person. And legally, it's not the same person. Legally, and I'm, I'm, this is not just in moral science, this is even in the modern day legal system. When they say things like baptism, and even if they say somebody was, was baptized under, under Jesus' name and all of that, technically they are not the same individual that they were before, legally. That's the law. And they can't technically be, be held to... This is why, and this is a, another, another off the record a little bit, but this is why in prison, they have the ministry set up. And technically, a lot of people get good time and get out of prison earlier than they usually, than they would have, whatever their sentence term is, if they adopt certain religious customs. Because if they adopt a religious custom legally, they've been changed, and they reverse their sins by going to the religious practice or ritual or whatever that religious says that you have to do to give back give back to Satan with Satan. Mm -hmm. Legally they they get people get off of that. So they not to be. not totally off, but they that will be considered in their next 
time that they go up to the board to get, you know, get good time or get parole or whatever it is. So when you, so when you just say the baptism ceremony, when you get baptized into the ceremony, you're given a name according to the, that baptism, which is a Christian name. And by having that Christian name, it automatically takes you away because you have a new name, but it, 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 you still have a, a, a former name that you had prior to you going in baptism. So now the former name you have is now doing the board now because of you took another, another name that puts you into another nationality or a group of people. Is that true? Because you have a former name prior to coming into baptism. Yes. So by you coming, becoming. Sometimes they don't. So, I mean, most Christian, uh, Christian, they don't change the name when they get baptized. But the difference is, it's a jurisdictional change. Yes, that's what it is. They're being baptized under the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. So technically, they belong to Jesus at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, the jurisdiction of Jesus Christ, not Jesus as justice itself. You know, not from a scientific point Jesus' name, mm -hmm. but. They become property of the church. And they become under the jurisdiction of Jesus Christ. So their, their ownership kind of changes from being born of your parents and of the state and being in the church taking you under. So the power of attorney really changes legally. But they don't really teach law like that from that perspective, so it's only used on high profile cases. That is a power of tongue. By yes, it. but there's power in that. Mm -hmm. Trust mm -hmm. me, it's power in that. That's why they do that. Religion is really law. No doubt about it. But of course, you had your hand up before? Yeah, I was one of the, uh, for me, can you, uh, the, the difference between the New Year's today and the. The New Year's when it really starts, like when I think it's spring or fall. Yeah, spring. we just spoke about that. that um, the, the January first is the fiscal New Year. Can you look up fiscal? Did you define that already? I read. All right. Fiscal New Year is the is the corporate is the beginning of a corporate for book calculating purposes. Is the beginning of when all books corporate activity is reset and goes back to zero for another year. So it's just a period from one time to the next, just a reference time of a start date of corporate activity, an end date of cor corporate activity, mm -hmm. just like taxes. Because you got a tax year in, year out, what they call year to date. You know, so it's for 